Hey, my name's Kyle Wadsworth, and literally right now I'm inside Westside because this is the wardrobe department for the show. Ted's jacket, Mike McCarthy's suit, and we're going to take a look at what we saw in tonight's episode. Westside differs from Outrageous Fortune in that um, each of the each episode is a kind of a distinct story. Um, there are kind of threads that run through it, but each episode is set in a different year, starting in 1974, ending in 1979. Uh, it and each episode is kind of set against uh, an actual event, um, like um, the Commonwealth Games of 1974, the um, general election of 1975 when Muldoon came to power. Um, uh, and uh, through to, but also against kind of social movements and things like drugs. In 1976, the police held dawn raids on the Polynesian community to remove overstays. After abandoning a job in the unfamiliar territory of South Auckland, Ted and the gang meet Fulani for the first time. Are you kidding for this? No. Good evening, everyone. Very pleased to make your acquaintance. I'm Fulani. Fulani was actually mentioned in the very first scene of the first episode of the first season of Outrageous Fortune. You'll need to sort out that thing with Fulani for those magwheels. But he didn't feature until the eighth episode. Hey, Cheryl. Fulani. What happened to your tow truck? It's broken. Fulani also didn't become a regular cast member until season three. In Outrageous Fortune, Fulani was a tow truck driver and mechanic. In Westside, we meet a young boy who has a fondness for cars, particularly stealing them. And I can see into the future, eh? I bet you two bucks that in ten minutes, I'll be driving a kick-ass Holden. Bullshit. This boy's got potential. Fellani is particularly impressed with Ted's occupation. He's like Superman with his double identity. Fulani moved in with Ted and Rita after they assumed he was an asylum seeker. When it was revealed that he wasn't actually an overstayer, Ted took him home. And did you notice who's playing Fulani's dad? Right. I'll come and visit. Yeah, make sure you do. In Outrageous Fortune, when hunting for the person who knocked up Rita, Ted mentioned that Carol had left Phineas before the Smith and Coe cock up. Carol left him just before the Smith and Coe's cock up. But in 1976, Carol actually left Phineas after he beat her up. And Rita certainly let Phineas know how she felt about that. On discussing the separation, Nairi suggested waiting for a new piece of legislation to come into law. You know there's this new law coming in. What law? The matrimonial property thingy. If you wait a couple of months, then you can take him for all he's got or half of it. She also suggested spending her Krugerrands now that she was without her man, a problem Rita wasn't at all happy with. When the motel owner dropped in a single Krugerrand she'd found, Rita becomes desperate to find a solution, and thankfully one presented itself. Now, the motel owner you might recognise as Mrs Hong from season one of Outrageous Fortune. What can I say? Of all of the things to have gone through the West Galleria, a couple of paintings from renowned artist Colin McCann changed the course of history forever. With the proceeds from their sale, thanks to Bilkey, Rita was able to purchase Carol's stash of Krugerrands. They too were buried at the West family home, but this time under the Fijoa tree. Fast forwarding to Outrageous Fortune, we learn that Rita's not the only one to have buried stuff in the backyard. So a few familiar faces in tonight's episode, which was pretty cool. Um, if you saw anything that we didn't, make sure you let us know. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching. We'll be back next week. Good night.